This has been a very special event to put together, and I'm very uh, happy to introduce Cleve, who will tell you the story of the rest of our panelists. Thank you. Okay, I'm not going to give a long speech because you want to hear from my friends and uh, panel members, Roma Guy, Ken Jones, Cecilia Chung, and Dion Jones. It's called Keeping Up with the Joneses. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's been quite an interesting ride for all of us, and I'm sure it's interesting for you, who are law students, at a time when the very notion of the rule of law uh, is clearly <laughs> gravely threatened. And, I wake up every morning and watch the news and I feel at times a great sense of despair and enormous anxiety and that's when I go back to my roots and I begin my book and end my book with a simple sentence that the movement saved my life. And that's not hyperbole, that's not rhetoric. I was a frightened teenager in Phoenix, Arizona when I was 15. I began to figure out why I was different from the other kids. I looked it up in my father's library and I learned that I was a criminal in the eyes of the law and that I was mentally ill in the eyes of the psychiatric establishment. So, at, at, you know, at 15 I thought my life was over before it even began. And I began to steal pills from my parents so that I could kill myself when I, I knew I would be discovered at some point. And, uh, then I read, it's true, in Life Magazine, 1971 year in review, about the gay liberation movement and discovered suddenly that I was not alone, that there, that, uh, there was a movement that was for people like me, that this was part of the larger movement that I had already joined, which in those days was the movement to end the war in Vietnam, to pass the Equal Rights Amendment, to support Dr. King and the Civil Rights Movement, Cesar Chavez and the farm workers. Uh, when I was in high school, I had already signed up for all of those causes, and it was a great revelation to learn that part of that movement was for people like me. And I also learned that there was a place called San Francisco. So when I graduated, I flushed the pills down the toilet, and when I graduated from high school, I got the hell out of Phoenix and hitchhiked up to San Francisco and landed in this beautiful neighborhood, the Tenderloin. Uh, <laughs> And I spent a lot of time here in every flea bag hotel uh, up the street here a little bit and uh, lived a pretty tenuous existence for a while. But I was extremely fortunate and really lucky. The first lesbians I met were Del Martin and Phyllis Lyon. I met them at a Quaker gathering in the summer of 1972. And shortly after that, I met uh, Harvey Milk. So I was extremely fortunate to be mentored by some of the great pioneers of the LGBT movement. People who also understood that what we as gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender people were doing was part of that larger and broader movement for peace and for social justice and the movement to save the planet. Uh, I fear that some of that has been lost and my greatest frustration now uh, as we face the, the challenges of this new administration and the, the nightmare that has been unfolding since the election is that we are so fragmented and so divided from each other and I am sick to death of it. I am tired of the vocabulary of uh, extreme identity politics which isolates us into our own little bubbles. I am frightened by the algorithms of social media which seem to ensure that we only talk to people who look like ourselves, think like ourselves, speak like ourselves. That is not the way we win. And I also am tired of this kind of uh, preachy uh, condescension of so many on the left uh, who cut off conversations before they even began. There's a young woman who works in my, my union who responded to, to the, the, you know, after the Women's March, which I was so inspired by. You know, I've been to a whole lot of marches in my life, and I watched the storm come in that day, and I thought, well, I don't know if anybody's going to show up, and I, I took a taxi, not an Uber, uh, <laughs> down to the Civic Center, and the deluge began, and more and more and more people showed up, and I saw signs calling attention to every single issue I'm concerned about, and yet uh, I think most of the marchers hadn't even gotten home when the criticism began. From the left, uh, talking about the issues that weren't included in, in the speakers at the rally. I didn't hear any of the speakers. There were too many people. Uh, but what I didn't hear them saying was what they were going to do 
to bring attention to those particular issues at the next march and the march after that, because we're going to be marching for a long time. So <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'm frustrated with my brothers and sisters on the left, and I think we need to get our act together. And you think it's crazy now, it's going to get a whole lot crazier, and it's going to happen pretty soon. So we all need to be very smart, very strategic, and we need to build coalitions. Some of the people here at this table are with Unite Here Local 2, which has its headquarters around the corner on Golden Gate. We're a fighting union. I've been part of this union for 12 years now, and uh, since the show came out, I've been getting absurd amounts of emails and letters and um, earnest young people coming up to me at book signings and asking me impossibly complicated questions. Um, <laughs> you. Uh, <clears throat> So I want to give my union as an example of what we need to do. So my union is Unite Here. We represent hospitality workers. Think of the, the housekeepers uh, cleaning the, the rooms in the hotels downtown, the people who prepare your, your meals at, at food courts on campuses and in airports. Uh, we are mostly immigrant women. We are black and brown and white. We are gay and straight. We are all different kinds of people that you can imagine. And we fight together. We don't have a black caucus, we don't have an LGBT caucus, we don't have a women's caucus. We're one union, we're united. We have to be because we know that the bosses, the uh, huge corporations that own these hotels, would love for us to be divided. And they do everything they can to foster segregation and prevent the workers from being unified because they know that once the Filipinos and the Chinese and the Latinos and the gays and the women and the documented and the undocumented work together, then they have great power and the ability to take on some of the largest corporations in the world and win victories that bring more money into the pockets of those workers provide safer working conditions for them, allow, encourage them to be treated with respect on the job, and build the larger movement. So last November was a terrible experience. Uh, I was alone in my apartment, and my boyfriend happened to be in Washington, D.C. at the time, and we're, he's younger than me, so we have to you know, communicate by text. <laughs> and uh, with each... With each uh, defeat, you know, I'm texting him and texting him, and, and then went to Pennsylvania went, I freaked out and I called him and I'm yelling at him over the phone. And finally, he cut me off. He said, Honey, you just went from zero to Auschwitz in three seconds. Now calm down. <laughs> Go to the mix. <laughs> Have a drink. <laughs> Meet your buddies from Local 2 and plan the march. And the next night, you know, we marched. and. Marches alone aren't going to do it, but we're going to keep marching and we're going to keep on fighting. And that same election uh, that brought such a catastrophe to the planet, um, Nevada went blue. That was because our union. In, in, in Nevada, we're the culinary, 226 Las Vegas. <laughs> Nevada not only went blue, but elected the first Latina to the United States Senate. That's what our union did. And I'm from Phoenix, Arizona, where there used to be this sheriff for Maricopa County, this horrendously evil, racist, homophobic, vicious person. And my union, Unite Here, led a coalition that registered tens of thousands of new Latino voters and voted Sheriff Arpaio out of office. In, in, the, in deep red states in the deep south, in Georgia and Louisiana. My union is negotiating collective, collective bargaining agreements that protect workers from discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity and gender expression in Louisiana, in Georgia, places like that where those states are never in our lifetime going to willingly grant those rights and those protections. Our union is negotiating those protections for thousands and thousands of workers. So all is not lost. And I think that my union offers a very wonderful example of how people from many, many different backgrounds and many different experiences can see beyond the, the obvious differences that we construct between each other and find that common ground 
and build that larger movement. And that was what I learned from Harvey Milk all those years ago. When I got here, a teenager from Phoenix, Arizona, you know, I wanted to build a wall around the Castro, keep straight people out, you know? <laughs> I've been beaten up too many times, I've been treated like crap for too long, and I would have been quite happy to live in a gay ghetto. And then to go campaigning with Harvey and to see the, the, the fearless way he approached all different kinds of people, rich white ladies from Knob Hill, homeless street kids in the Tenderloin, black people, brown people, Filipino people, firefighters, all the different kinds of people who used to make this such an amazingly diverse city. And he would just say, hi, I'm Harvey Milk. And he'd make eye contact and he'd begin that conversation and he'd find whatever it was he had in common with that person and begin a conversation. That really inspired me. It was a lesson that I've has stuck with me for a long time. Um, before I uh, turn this over, I want to acknowledge some of the people from Unite here. And um, can somebody stand up and tell us what is the one or two things that you in this room can do to support Local 2 and our members and our larger union around the United States and Canada? Justin, you want to bellow out something? Um, so I want to acknowledge the workers that are here in this room. Because I am the Queers of $3 bill, gay son of Queer <laughs> and I moved to San Francisco because it offered a beacon of hope and a safe place where progressive politics were being advanced and coalitions were built between women, immigrants, people of color, and that's what this union stands for. And the workers in this room represent the good men, women, and people who may not identify with either of those who have fought with Cleve and with my community and with our union to advance this progressive politics. And if you want to know what the Unite Here is doing in San Francisco to ensure that it remains a beacon of hope for future kids from the South and then the people who came from Arizona like me, then all you have to do today is text We Rise to 877-877 and my union will keep you informed about the fights and the battles that they are fighting here in San Francisco where we have hotels that haven't respected workers' basic dignity and respect to organize and form a union in, in San Francisco for years. So for these people, please text that number. And if you feel like you want to take a stand and fight with Cleve and with our union for the politics that Cleve has been describing, then find us at the end of this event. We have forms here that will help you sign up. And you can sign up and join with us. If it's just coming to a picket line, or if it's becoming the lawyers that I hope many to become in fighting for progressive politics, whether that be in City Hall, or the United States Senate, or who knows, maybe president someday, because God forbid we have another incident like what we're going through now. Thank you, Justin. Um, our union in recent months has beaten Trump twice. We organized the workers in his casino in Las Vegas, and we organized the workers at his new hotel in Washington, D.C. So uh, with all the craziness and anxiety out there, I am so grateful to be part of Unite here. Uh, and I know that uh, all is not lost. And I think that's, uh, for me, the other kind of recurring theme from uh, my book, which is simply, there's been so many times in my life when I thought everything was over. And I know that many of you felt that way on election day and still feel a lot of, of uh, really deep fear. And I just need to tell you, uh, now that I'm an old man, that there's going to be so many times in your life when you think it's over and the movement is done and you're done and you just got to pick yourself up, reach out to your friends, your neighbors, Find that common ground and understand that your voices do matter. The choices you make matter. You are not powerless. There's a lot of people who hope you believe you are powerless, but you're not. And now is the time to use that power. Thanks very much for being here. Appreciate it.